Thank you. Good evening, everybody. I would like to call this meeting of July 2nd, 2024, to order at 7 p.m. on July, well, I said July 2nd, 2024. Thank you. We'll stay seated for a moment of silent reflection. Thank you very much. As we gather this evening, I acknowledge on behalf of Council and our community that we are meeting on the traditional territory of the Algonquin people. We thank the Algonquin people and express our respect and support for their rich history, and we are extremely grateful for their many and continued displays of friendship. We also thank all the generations of people who have taken care of this land for thousands of years. And we'll move to the mayor's address. I would like to extend condolences to Maria Robinson on the passing of her father on June the 26th, 2024. During the month of June, I attended 13 meetings for municipal and or county business. On July 25th, 2024, I attended the Renfrew County Training and Learning Center annual general meeting in Eganville. During the past year, the center welcomed 72 new learners to their program. The center customizes their programs for each individual so they can gain the skills they require to achieve their goals. The guest speaker was a captain and safety officer for the Vulture Valley Fire Department, who received computer skills training to improve his efficiency in preparing reports. The post COVID landscape has highlighted the importance of digital literacy, providing training for seniors, workers, and volunteers. At the June 26, 2024 County Council meeting, Keanan Stone, who's the chair of the Renfrew County Agriculture Economic Development Committee, and Jennifer Dolman, who's director of the Renfrew County Federation of Agriculture, appeared as a delegation on the importance of agriculture in Renfrew County. I have attached a copy of the presentation to my address. On Thursday, September 26, 2024, Renfrew County, CAO, and staff are developing a Renfrew County Municipal Day for local elected municipal officials and their municipal staff. The day will consist of presentations from all county departments focusing on key initiatives and opportunities for collaboration. Please make sure to mark it on your calendars. On behalf of Council and myself, I want to thank all the volunteers, staff, and Council who helped in the planning and organization of our Canada Day celebrations and activities at Melissa Bishop Park. Thanks again to the Lake Dory Property Owners Association for preparing the pancake and sausage breakfast, and our North Algona Wilberforce Blady family for their excellent entertainment. And with that, I have a motion that the July 2nd, 2024 Mayor's Address be accepted as presented. Moved by Councillor Burns, seconded by Councillor Buckwell. Comments or questions? Seeing none, Councillor Burns? Yes. Councillor Robinson? Yes. Councillor Buckwell? Yes. Councillor Rekha Schoenfeld? <clears throat> yes. I'm a yes. That's carried. Thank you. Are there any declarations of pecuniary interest and the general nature thereof? Seeing none, then we'll move to the adoption of the minutes. And I have a motion that the June 18th, 2024 regular council minutes be accepted as presented. Moved by Councillor Reggie Schoenfeld, seconded by Councillor Robinson. Are there any additions, corrections, or omissions? Council Burns. It shows that there's nobody voted for adjournment at the end. Okay. Noted. Okay. Thank you very much. Any other corrections? Seeing none, then we'll move to accept the minutes as amended. Council Burns. Yes. Councilor Robinson? Yes. Councilor Buckley? Yes. Councilor Ray Pichonko? Yes. I mean, yes. It's carried. Thank you. Right. So we have no delegation, so we'll move to reports. And item 7.1 is the noise extension request. 
that Morseman Council agrees, pursuant to Section 5.0 of the Noise Bylaw 2020-49, to extend the time that amplification equipment may be used at an outdoor event on Saturday, September 21st, 2024, to 2 a.m. on Sunday, September 22nd, 2024, for property located at 1223 Grist Mill Road. And further, that staff will send letters to all properties within 200 meters of the event, informing them that the extension has been granted. So I will move by Councillor Buckwell, seconded by Councillor Burt. Comments or questions? Councillor Rickerson. Just wondering why it gets sent to the advisory committee. It doesn't. I think that's just um, left over in the template. We we have it in the template of the report, so I think they're just going to get taken out. Okay. Thanks. Sorry about that. That's actually on every template, yeah, and we just put yes or no. No. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah, because it used to be a checkbox. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's yeah. what I. Okay. Because no, because then I was yeah, because I just it's, remembered that I don't still know a few of them. Yeah, I just remember the checkbox. That's why. Yeah. Thanks. That's a problem. And uh, one place it says twelve twenty three, and the next place it says twelve twenty eight. Right. Well, which one? Oh, the addresses. Yeah. All oh, the addresses. Twelve twenty eight. It says on the one. Okay. Twelve twenty eight. Good catch, Councilor Berry. So with that, then we'll uh, move to accept as amended. Uh, Councilor Burns. Yes. Councilor Robinson. Yes. Councilor Buckwell. Yes. Councilor Rickey Fonfo. Yes. Uh, yes. It's carried. Thank you. And all seven point two is the Bonshire Union Public Library report, and I have a motion that the Bonshire Union Library CEO and board reports be accepted as information. Moved by Councillor Buckwell, seconded by Councillor Comments or questions. Councillor Ivy Trinkle. Um, Councillor Robinson, when the books get out of uh, circulation, what happens to them at the library? Do they um, give them away or sell them or? The if they're in good condition, then they'll run the books out. Okay. And if not, they just the trash. They have to be yeah, destroyed. Okay. Yes. And also worth mentioning that uh, next week, the Vulture Authors Festival starts. It starts, um, yes. I believe next. Yeah, because Monday. Next Monday, yeah. Yeah, next Monday. And there's a fine lineup. Yes. That was a very good event. Mm -hmm. Any other comments or questions? Seeing none, Councillor Burns? Yes. Councillor Robinson? Yes. Councillor Buckwell? Yes. Councillor Rachel? Yes. yes. And yes, that is carried. Thank you. Item 7.3 is the annual and council meeting dates. So I have a motion that the August 20th, 2024 regular council meeting be rescheduled to August 27th, 2024, and that staff promptly post the change of dates on the township social media and the office entrance bulletin board. And I got a mover in a second, moved by Council Burt, seconded by Council Robinson. Comments or questions? Seeing none, Council Burt. Yes. Councillor Robinson? Yes. Councillor Buckwell? Yes. Councillor Rachel Jones? Yes. I mean, yes. That's carried. Thank you. Okay. Item 7.4 is the memorial bench. And I have a motion that Council accepts this report and directs staff to develop a procedure to purchase and install a bench that includes a dedication plaque at Melissa Bishop Park. And the background is there. Do I have a move by Councilor Rector Schoenfeld, seconded by Councilor Robinson? Comments or questions? Councilor Rector Schoenfeld? 
just to ensure, um, on the weekend I was talking to Cameron about the place structure and she told me about the person that comes in and she, I know it's a, not a place structure, it's a bench, but does somebody have to like, you know, give their stamp of approval before we buy one or get one? So this is probably gonna hurt like deep in the budget. So I'm not sure. <clears throat> What you're talking about. Just to, if, okay, so if we go ahead and, and tell the resident that yes, we, we'd allow them to put a memorial bench there, right? right? Is there certain benches we have to choose from? It just can't be like a generic yes. one. Just I'm just saying because getting back to the place structure, you know, and insurance and liability, like I'm sure there is a type of bench that is suitable for. Yeah, so we, my understanding that there are already two benches there, so mm -hmm. we just put it one the same as the same one. Okay. Any other questions or comments? Seeing none, Councilor Burns? Yes. Councilor Robinson? Yes. Councilor Blackwell? Yes. Councilor Redditchell? Both? Yes. I mean, yes. That's carried. Thank you. Item 7.5 is the Seniors Act, the Active Living Center, and I have a motion that the committee accepts the Seniors Active Living Center report as presented, and further, that council direct staff to approve in principle, pursuing discussions and negotiations with local seniors programming providers before entering into a Seniors Active Living Center agreement to offer more permanent and robust seniors programming in North Aurora Lower Forest Township. So I have a moving moved by Councilor Buckwell, seconded by Councilor Edgar Schoenfeld. Comments or questions? Councilor Edgar Schoenfeld. So I speak to Ms. Montgomery. So it seems like the SLAC is provincially funded, right? And then this question I had was local organizations, like who or what are the local organizations? The township has been approached by local organizations. Well, one is the Edenville Seniors. Okay. Um, and the other ones, it's just been a original conversation. But I don't know if they, I don't know if they, it was like a public conversation. And this is the one thing that's a concern to me. This would entail a minimum $25,000 contribution towards salary for a staff to manage the program and services and an in-kind contribution of the facility use and potential resources. And then I know on the second part, it talked about how the in-kind could talk about on the second page could talk about the in kind could be you know the use of the facilities or the use of people but back to the salary like so so it looks like like a salary just for somebody in North Abona Wilberforce to set up you know activities for the seniors in North Abona Wilberforce or what does that look like? It's my understanding that it's quite flexible and the arrangement between a nonprofit and the municipality can look different in every trance. So, especially in rural communities. So this, this specific offer is from one organization and like other organizations could potentially approach us with a different model, but this specifically with the Eganville seniors, they, this is what they do. So this is what they basically, the preliminary ask to kind of start a conversation about whether or not we're interested in doing it. And then I'm still kind of confused because Eganville would go to Bonisher Valley. Wouldn't they set up something in Bonisher Valley, Eganville, as opposed to... So the, the, the Echo Center. It would be the Echo Center, and they would have a sort of outreach project. Oh, and we could be an outreach project? We'd be an outreach project. So then the salary, the salary wouldn't necessarily be for a person, you know, looking after North Obona. It might be subsidizing the person's salary who... Works at Toronto Valley. So essentially, this is just to start the conversation. It's not to commit twenty five thousand dollars or anything. This is just sort of like to give you an idea of what the expectation financially is. What exactly you go through every budget item line by line and decide what would actually work for this community. And if you have any feedback about that process, then certainly give it to me. But this would just be because you know we're going into the summer. There's going to be a long gap without meetings, and if we're going to start talking about it, then. And, and just if I can add, there are a couple models existing right now. Like I believe Kilroo has one. South Algonquin has just recently started one. And is there one in Cobden? I know that there are a few senior active living centers, and the local um, organizations that Cameron is speaking about are running them similar to um, to like the, the toy bus mm. or the CRC model, where they're going out into communities into. Um, 
into local municipalities facilities as opposed to trying to run them out of seniors facilities specifically. So that's what's happened in South Alabama. And they're, they're running them two days a week um, in, in the, the local rec buildings. And they're doing things like, um, you know, bus trips to, I don't know, they've gone to the art gallery in Algonquin Park, for example, and different things like that. So it's really, um, the program itself is really uh, geared towards working with seniors to understand what they want and what they feel is, is missing in their community and then trying to build a program around that. So it's really user driven. Um, but there are yeah, a couple examples we could get around. Okay. Elsa Rollins, just a question. I just wanted to find out if this is in conjunction with the grant that was given. So that was sort of like was a test of our relationship and it went really well. So mm -hmm. that's sort of why they approached us about this, because there is that funding to set up another center. So it, it would be sort of an expansion and it could eventually turn into building a building or something like that, that the Eganville Senior would be the driving force behind. Um, I think that's kind of where we're going with it, but yeah. My other question is right now we are also working with the Echo Center with for from a funding perspective on an annual basis. How would that take into account this? It would be in addition to that contribution. And my question was so is this uh, a program in addition to what the Echo Center is currently doing, or is it in conjunction with? So imagine that they have a Zuma program at the Echo Center that's super uh, popular and they have a lot of people from Golden Lake attending, then they would offer it at one of our facilities, for example. And the, that staff person would be tasked with offering it at that facility. That's just an example. Could be anything. Could be anything like arts and crafts, like travel, sports, anything. I mean, they do a lot of different things. Baking, canning, stuff like that. Absolutely, yeah. And but people from other townships could also go there too. Seniors from other townships could go there. Too. Yeah. And I'm wondering, and maybe you're not sure, Cameron, mm -hmm. is this similar to the, the program and the funding that the uh, 50 plus fit and feisty in Laurentian Valley got? No, it's not a cell that they have. Okay. Um, but I mean, they're probably going to sell one. To be honest, the province is setting them up in a lot of smaller communities that haven't done it. So, so it's fairly, it's a fairly new program. Then. They've been, so like the Pembroke um, 50 plus active living center beside the library has been running, it's a cell. And it used to be more of that kind of institutional approach, but this is, expanding to smaller communities, the smaller grants, and that kind of thing. Okay. And it's a way to take the program to the people as opposed to trying to get them into one particular building. It's not a bad idea. Any other uh, questions or comments? So I'll call the vote. Councillor Burke. Yes. Councillor Robinson. Yes. Councillor Buckle. Yes. Councillor Reckie Tonefall. Yes. Yes, Item 7.6 is the auto extrication draft services agreement. I have motion the council accept this report as information and direct staff to implement consented changes as discussed regarding the draft agreement. Moved by Councillor Robinson, seconded by Councillor Burt. Comments or questions? Councillor Anderson. Who who writes the uh, agreement? Like, do you write it in conjunction, I, Chief Sarazen, or you do you use uh, another? I, I, I use the uh, former one we had with Bob Bob Okay. As a base. Okay. And I just um, throw it up. Okay. And it's still. I would strongly urge it to be run in front of a lawyer. That's what I was just going to say. And should they be run in front of a lawyer? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. The language that's in it is basically a, a copy of what we used before. Mm -hmm. So, okay. The only question I have is how realistic is that $500 yearly fee, or should it be more? It's just a number I came up with. So, if the council wishes it to be higher than that, I, I'm fairly certain they would not be balking at 
save a thousand dollars a year. And that's where I was thinking of mm -hmm. doubling it to a thousand dollars. Yeah. Yeah. I was basically looking at the, the work that was involved in our end and try and monetize and put a monetary value on it. Right. So what has to be done annually once the agreement is set up? What do you have to do every year then? Basically just be available. Right. For that thousand dollars could be uh, just some of our training costs when there's getting cars to cut up, mm -hmm. it's equipment maintenance, things mm -hmm. like that. I wouldn't think that anything higher than that would be suitable okay. given the workload. Right. It's just fairly low. And is, is there any difference to how it gets billed, being that I know on MTO uh, we get reimbursed by the province? Is there any reimbursement by the federal government because it's not that under I'm, their jurisdiction? Okay. Not that I'm aware of. But they would be paying us at the MTO rate. Mm -hmm. Okay. So the government would be responsible for that that, that uh, recompensation. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions? So would we then ask staff to make some of those changes, or does that come from the fire department? How does that work? I think that if you would like to have it reviewed by a lawyer, you should mm -hmm. give us that direction to do that. Do we have to change our resolution to indicate that? Or just add that uh, council and direct staff to uh, get a legal opinion? Yeah, do, do you have general comments? Well, I would just like to make sure that it's current to whatever all the other agreements are. And I do remember at the one workshop it was, it should be in a resolution because okay. if we don't put in a resolution, mm -hmm. then it never happened, right? So this way, if it's, in a, if it's in the resolution, then we can say, yeah, we did on you know July 2nd say that. And and I guess the only for me, the only change would be changing the 500 to 1,000. Uh, and getting a legal, yeah, just to, uh, yeah, a lawyer to vet it to make sure everything's proper. Did you want to change that right away, Laura? Mm -hmm. Yeah, sure. Can we do that for a lawyer? Yes. So it now reads that council accept this report as information and direct staff to implement consented changes as discussed regarding the draft agreement, that the admin fee will be changed to $1,000, and that the agreement be vetted by a law. Are we over in second or open table? Okay. Yes. Any other comments? Seeing none, Councilor Burke? Yes. Councilor Robinson? Yes. Councilor Buckler? Yes. Councilor Ryder Schoenfeld? Yes. On the yes, that's very, thank you. Item 7.7 .7 is the fire department surplus equipment. And I have a motion of council accepts the report as presented and declares the equipment listed as surplus and direct staff to dispose of the item in accordance with township policies. Moved by Councillor Burke, seconded by Councillor Bachholm. Comments or questions? Councillor Rector Schoenfeld. On the website where we do put surplus vehicles, is there a, a fee for that? Like a percent? They, they do take a, a cut. I couldn't tell you exactly what that, you know, what that right. fee is, but it's based on the price. 
So like, I know Kijiji and Marketplace is free and I feel like tires, big tires, some person is going to want those big tires. Well, yeah, that's why I listed it as a possible alternative. So I like the alternative of putting it on advertised local and put it on social media because guaranteed somebody's going to want those and that just saves us whatever the fee is mm -hmm. at that other place. The only advantage to the, uh, what, the option site is it's got a larger Yeah, reach. yeah. But, uh, Okay, personally, when I'm looking for something, I mean, Marvel. I'll find something in Niagara Falls if I just like put the search in Marketplace or could you just. Yeah. 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 The, the only concern I have with doing that, Janet, is we would have to actually set a price to the first person to meet it. Because if not, how do you do bidding to ensure no, no, you get that, the best value? But that's right. That's right. I, I know. Just put a price on it. Yeah. Because you guys know what they're like, and it's easy just to do a Google a search on Kijiji or Marketplace or something similar and just set a price. Right. Yeah, because just just looking at the way we just we dispose of things, it's usually done through mm -hmm. competitive bidding type thing. But we also know, like for instance, that truck that you guys got through the fire department, it was competitive bidding, and you guys thought you got a really good deal on it, right? Mm -hmm. So it can work both ways. Oh, where you yeah. put it on competitive bidding, and some it's worth a thousand. And somebody just bids, you know, <clears throat> 200. Yeah. Like I sold a set of tires that were in really bad shape, but just because they were big, I still got a hundred bucks where somebody said, no, they're just garbage. So I guess what does our policy say? Can we do that sort of thing? Mm -hmm. Or it doesn't have to be through auction. I think we have steam surplus. You can lots of steam surplus. You can sell it, but we can make sure that we take a look at that. Yeah. The, the follow up policy. Yeah. yeah. But if there is no policy, then we could try it on. Oops, could you do your marketplace or something? Yeah. Just come up with a competitive price. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. Any other comments? <clears throat> Seeing none. Councilor Burke. Yes. Councilor Robinson? Yes. Councilor Blackwell? Yes. Councilor Rector Schoenfeld? Yes. Uh, yes. That's carried. Thank you. Item 7.8 is the fire station tree removal. And I have a motion that Council accepts this report as information and provides direction to staff. Moved by Councillor Burns, seconded by Councillor Rector Schoenfeld. Comments or questions? Councillor Rector Schoenfeld. I do like this, will make Valerie Champ, our official and star lights, very happy. <laughs> yeah, that's really good. I can't remember. Is that is that smaller tree? Is it is it a is it a deciduous or canopus? It's canopus. Could we not like sell it for a Christmas tree? Uh, Christmas it's a little big for that. <laughs> okay, the other thing too is, um, Maybe more members of the fire department need to be certified in cutting trees down. It is on my list of things to do, but it just haven't have made it that far yet. Okay, because I think that would be important, right? Yes. If you get to some kind of incident and you need people that have the... Yeah, we have lots of people that are very experienced. But they don't have the official certification. And then we have people that have certification that aren't very experienced. Yeah. <laughs> it's true. If I had the choice, I would let Devin do it before I would... Yes. Yeah. Okay. It's just a legal thing. Yeah. And if we were going to run such a program, it's not a bad idea if some of the ones that are certified do it as well. Mm -hmm. And there's yeah. probably some people in public works that don't officially have it either. Okay. I'm not sure. We have to check the data. Do they, do they all have it? Because that's just something important. Okay. We just wanted to highlight um, we have heard as a rumor that that tree had been donated or or was does anyone know can anyone confirm or negate that they just don't want to cut the tree that we're talking about cutting down we just want to make sure that it wasn't dedicated to anyone i can't remember but that little tree i know there's some the maple trees that were planted in there that was a grant that we got yeah that's the only thing i can think of do you know <laughs> We're just looking for information. We don't want to cut a tree down and then have someone come back. No, and yeah, I hear what you're saying. That was, you know. Yeah, this is, but, yeah. Yeah. It's not because of all I don't know. Yeah. Okay. If, if I can make a suggestion, maybe we can put it down in a um, 
um, on the website for a couple of weeks before we before we pull trigger on anything. Yeah. That's not a bad idea. Yeah, yeah, because it could have been donated or yeah. you know yeah. planned for somebody. Yeah. Yeah. I don't remember of someone. Um, Councilor Beckwell, do you see Harold Weckworth at all? Like, could you ask him maybe? Yeah, I could ask him. He might know. I see him every morning. Okay, well, he's been around for a while. Mm -hmm. And he's a mailman. Yeah. Well, basically, how many lane would be yeah. the two mm -hmm. that I would think would, would know, or Denise. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Thank you. chat. Any other comments? Say none, Councilor Burns? Yes. Councilor Robinson? Yes. Councilor Buckwell? Yes. Councilor Ricky Kilmer? Yes. And a yes. Well, very good. Okay. And 7.9 is the Enbridge Gas Franchise Agreement. And it'll most in that the Council of the Corporation of North of Ronald Wilberforce Township gives third and final reading to bylaw 2022 52, being a bylaw to authorize. A franchise agreement between the Corporation of North Dakota Water Force Township and Enbridge Gas Incorporated. Moved by Councilor Rick and Schoenfeld, seconded by Councilor Buckholt. Comments or questions? Councilor Rick and Schoenfeld. I'm assuming a long time ago, like in 2022, our lawyers vetted this whole agreement, right? Yes, there was actually a, a JT, sorry, JP2G report written in 2022 that was provided to council that outlined all of the reasons that there needed to be a franchise agreement and, and what we were actually doing. And I think, was it completed? Did we complete it? No, but I do remember um, when we passed the resolution to make yeah. sure we had that reviewed and uh, approved. And so what's happened since then, you did the first and second reading, and then sent, we sent it back to Anchorage, and now they've done what they need to do, and they've sent it back to us for the third reading. Just a point to take out, submit to the advisory committee, or is that intentional? Mm -hmm. okay. yeah, thank you. Um, any other comments? Seeing none, Councilor Burns? Yes. Councilor Robinson? Yes. Councilor Buckwell? Yes. Councilor Reggie Conefeld? Yes. Yes, that is carried. Thank you. And the next item is a modification of NAW and BV fire service agreement. And I have a motion that council accepts this report as information to enter into a modified fire response agreement with Bolter Valley. Moved by Councillor Burke, seconded by Councillor Robinson. Comments or questions? Two, que two questions. Break your phone call. In the second last line where it says, uh, the language of the agreement also limits the number of apparatuses and fire players which can be built. What does that look like? Does that mean like if 20 people went out, we'd only could build for 10, but we'd still have to pay our volunteers the other 10? That's that correct. Right? It works the other way as well. Right. Anything they send more than the, the agreed amount, mm -hmm. is, it's on there. Okay. Time. All right. And then, and then like when I, I looked at all the streets and stuff like that, I thought like some of them are in the yellow. Those are the ones that are... Uh, Sheikh, you have me? Is that the ones in the yellow should be the ones that are, we are responding to, or they are responding to for us? Okay. All right. Depending on which uh, okay. you're looking at. Okay. Which schedule. Yeah, I was just, yeah, because I was just wondering. I was trying to look at to see where my titles were. Yeah, okay. Response area and extraction. I was trying to figure that out. Yes. But that's based, okay. That's the area of ours. They, they are coming. Right, okay. Yeah, and, and vice versa. The area that we're, we're covering for them. Okay, thank you. Councilor Buckwell. And I, I see in there, Chief, that uh, we don't have wildland or open air burns in there anymore. That's correct. Mostly because it was, it's, it's not a high threat mm -hmm. and it was costing us a lot, a lot of money. Yeah. 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 Somebody would call in a burn complaint and they, they would send two departments. Yeah, yeah two departments. So these changes then get sent to the dispatching uh, company that so that they're aware of 
once all our bodies are gone in Jesus' crop and Monsher Valley's put their blessing upon it as well, then yes. So this, just for clarification as well, so this means that we limit, say, our first response to, I don't know, six or seven people, and then if more attend, the department that has sent out more personnel is responsible for the extra payment. Okay. Is there a way to, our first response agreement like this? What we're trying to do is get some boots on the ground immediately. Yes. And they can start set up setting up what needs to be set up. And the, the, the other responding department will be along shortly. And then they get to take over and are going to the home unless they're required. And then they ask to go on. So if they arrive first to the scene and they recognize that it's going to require more personnel, do they have the authority or do we have the authority to bring in more personnel or do you have to wait until the no. municipalities department responds? No, the municipality is doing the first response. If they see that it is, a, for example, a structure fire, yes, that they can, they can bring more people in, but it's going to be on their dime. Okay. And the same thing for us. And uh, Chief Lou Wagner is fully on board with this just to try and keep it uh, uh, a costing that is going to be predictable. Right. So we know if we have an incident, the most it's going to cost is X number of dollars. And vice versa. And vice versa. But there's nothing stopping them from uh, saying, getting on the radio and saying, hey, you're going to be big, you're going to need some mutual aid, you want to call mutual aid. And then we, we need that. Okay. Uh, it's good we're paying for that anyway, either way. Yeah. So, yeah. 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 Makes sense. Well, thank you for that clarification. Any other uh, questions? Seeing none, Council Burt. Yeah. Council Robinson. Yes. Council Buckwell. Yes. Council Randy Trumpo. Yes. And yes, that is okay. <laughs> With that, sir, I have taken a bit off your time. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thanks. Thanks. Have a good night. Nice night. So, okay. Thanks for coming, Bill. Yes, much appreciated. Item 711 is in regards to Highland View Drive, and I have a motion that council provide the option that the resident provide the suggested drainage alternative in writing, and once received, staff submit the alternative to the consultant who prepared the original report for consideration and approval, and the cost to update the report will be paid by the property owner, and that once the resident agrees to a drainage improvement, staff will continue to work toward putting a drainage easement in place. Moved by Councilor Robinson, seconded by Councilor Buckholt. Comments or questions? Councilor Edgerson, Getting a consultant involved is, is going to cost us money again. I like. I went and I looked at it. So the way the road changed, then they put a culvert underneath the road. Then that stand-up pipe <clears throat> really wasn't put in on the red pine side. So then what happened was there was an open area, I guess, and everything was to drain in there. But then I guess the person thought somebody could fall in there or a car could get stuck in there. So then what the township did was put a whole bunch of rocks on there. Right, so now that water can never get from the red pine side ditch across because of the rocks. And then I can see when you look at it that the water comes down kind of both sides. It's not going across or through underneath the road to the lake. It's going to head towards red pine camp, which causes another issue. And so, like to me. If we were to put that stand-up pipe there and do something similar that's on on the what would you say the house side yeah yeah the house side house side that would catch a lot of that water coming down and then it shouldn't go to the red pine sign side it should go underneath right so that's one thing and the other thing too is like I think the resident is just asking what he had before and kind of when we made the improvements to Ellenview Drive. There was some stuff that went on, maybe a mix up or whatever, put the stuff in. He's concerned now because the water comes down and it does kind of erode. 
goes into the lake, erodes his, I don't know, his beach, right? Where it went before, it was hitting the big rocks and then kind of dissipating and going. Like we have been dealing with this for a long time. Well, like, like I think sometimes we can get over consulted, like or over lawyered or over, you know, I don't know. I mean, Sometimes you want to do it right, but by doing it right, are we really like just spending more money? Like, why can't we just, you know, move that over a little bit? And really, that's all he's asking for. That that's just my opinion. Like to me, we've dealt with it a lot of time. I went there and looked at it. Maybe some other people went there and looked at it. To me, it doesn't seem like a big job. Also, Robinson, but I don't think it's the job. It's the fact that any work that we do on his property becomes our liability. But a long That's time but a long time ago, I think he was given the insurance that it would be when we did work on the road, that he was going to get what he had. And he didn't get what he had. Like if we read his letter, you know, he basically says he asked for this and he was assured that he was going to get this, but he got something totally different. And we granted him permission. We granted, he granted us permission to do what he did. Like if you read the letter, you know. That's a good problem. Yeah, I've, I've been up there a few times and I've spoken to the property owner and I've, I've looked things over. So the, the, the drainage that we put on the Lake side. Upper, the upper side, okay. or not the lake side, the other side, is connected to that one that's on the lake side, kind under of, the road. Kind of. Yeah. So when the water when the water builds up on the one on the opposite side, it comes across to here, and then it goes down that pipe next to his house down in the water. All right. Because if, if not, there's not a lot of water can come in there based on where it's located. If there's enough water to erode the beach, it means that that drain on the other side is working. If not. But the, but the way I saw it was most of the water comes down, I'm going to say, on the lakefront side. And that's where it goes down into that kind of tile thing or that great thing and goes underneath. I'm not sure how the water can get across because it's just a straight culvert, mm -hmm. right? And then it's kind of blocked at the other end with the rocks and, and guaranteed there's sediment in there. I don't see. And plus, too, it's nearly at a lower, lower, it's down lower. So now to me what happens is the water comes down. It doesn't go through that culvert underneath. It actually goes towards the fence line and that way. Like to me, if we had a stand-up culvert, a stand-up pipe at the end of that culvert on the fence side, I'm going to call it the fence side, the red pine side, oh. right? We brought the elevation up. Then when it did come down, it should hit that pipe and then go underneath the culvert. I don't think... But, but you're, still, you're still going to have to modify the pipe going across the road. Because once the water once the water gets down in there, the water's getting down in there. Because after all that rain we had, there's no water sitting in that soil, and and the ground didn't absorb that much rain. It yeah. went it went through it went through that rock and into that and across the road and out into the lake. I guarantee it. But I don't think that culvert is attached to that that mound of rocks. I don't think like the culvert is. It's underneath it. I don't know if it is or not. Mm -hmm. That's a far part. Then that culvert would go from. Yeah. Through the window, like here's the road. So you're telling me the culvert goes that much further if through you, those rocks? If, if, if you look at the one that's on the lake side, if you were to lift that up and look in there, you'll yeah, see where the see, pipe and I can see that goes yeah. across. It goes all the way across the other one. It doesn't just go into the ground. I know, but I'm just saying how far is it together? Yeah, because I don't see it being tied together. They I just think it goes under. No, they are tied together. So where the rocks are, you're telling me the culvert goes that far to hit the rocks on the mm -hmm. other side? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's why we hired a consultant to review the installation and the consultant confirmed that the installation was done and, and would work. And that, yes, the property owner had another idea that could have also probably worked, but the way it was done was certainly appropriate. And as far as getting the easement, I agree that it should be an easement because Anytime our staff have to work on private property, well, technically they're not allowed to do work on private property unless we have an agreement. And it may not have happened when it was done originally, 
And I think sometimes this is where, and we're not the only municipality that encounters this, is stuff that was done maybe 15, 20, well, that was probably done about 25 or 30 years ago. Uh, Mid 80s. Yeah. That was done. And certainly, we're not allowed to do some of those things now. There's much different regulations. And if we've, we're at an, we have an opportunity where we can correct this. But when we worked on this road a couple of years ago, we didn't have an easement and we put that drain from on his property down to the lake, right? Well, there's always been a drain there. I know, but we still went to his property. We still were on his property and there wasn't an easement then. I mean, the drain was there. I'm not disagreeing with yeah. that, but we didn't really have easement permission to go there. You're right. We probably shouldn't have done that. Uh -huh. Did we change that drain when we put the culvert in and did that road over? I think we did. We moved it. Uh -huh. The drain going down on this property. Uh -huh. Did we move the whole thing or did they just shift the end of it? No. I don't know if we moved the whole thing or not. I don't think we did. Thing, but... I, I think we did. When I talked to the resident, we did move the whole thing over. And that was the problem. He, for some strange unknown reason, he knew they were coming. He was supposed to be there. Then he couldn't be there. He told them what he wanted. And then that's not what happened. Like, truly, I think he wanted it moved over about uh, a foot and a half. Like, not that. It's not that much. But the foot and a half would take it down to hit the big rocks. And then it, it would, like, kind of dissipate more, right? Because it'd be hitting the big rocks as opposed to where it's going now. Yeah. So the, 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 the concern I have is it's, it's there. It's been moved. If we go to move it back again, are we even on his property? Yeah. Because the property lines are very close there. And again, unless we have unless we have it surveyed and have a proper easement that identifies exactly where it is, because it is a municipal work. Mm -hmm. So and we're putting it's again, it's on private property. If we're going to do any more work to that, there has to be an easement for his protection and for ours. And the neighbor. And the neighbor. Or and future owners of yeah. either property. That's what I said. One of the concerns that were decided that an easement would go to the basement or something like that. So the width, oh, the width that was explained in the one email was like three meters. Well, you can't have. There's not enough space there, so no. that level would have to change. Mm -hmm. um, that was. But but how could the easement change if there's a rule and they say three meters? Like to me, you, do, you can't say, well, no, the easement is not three meters there. I know there's not three meters there. That's exactly that's and that's and what that's said too. And, I mean, and again, when Adrian quoted that, again, he may have just done that based on what's traditionally done. I have no doubt that we can do one smaller if need be. See, I, I don't know that I couldn't say that in my head. Like, I mean, and realistically, and what should have happened is said, yeah, yeah, three meters takes you into the basement. We have got to look at something else, right? Like, that could have been said, too, so that you don't get the resident more excited. You know, the concern that I have is that we've been chasing this for oh, many years. Mm -hmm. and we still haven't come to a resolution. Well, and when when you look at the new build that's on top, you can tell that it's a little higher, and you can see that gravel is coming down on our road. Do you know what I mean? Like that had to be landscaped or manicured or something different too, because now when it does like lots of water, you'll see this the, the bank the, the ditch side. I don't know. Yeah. I mean, well, I I go through there tonight on my way on my way here, and after all the rain that we've had in the last two weeks, the little bit of erosion that's there. Operationally, it's not a concern. Yeah, because when I was there a couple of weeks ago, you could see gravel on the road, definitely, on either side near the top of that hill. So we do have a resolution, and the resolution, again, says that the resident is can provide the suggested drainage alternative he wants in writing, and we can, if that gets approved by a consultant, and he's willing to pay for it, we can move in that direction. Can I can I see the resolution in writing, printing? Because there was some stuff there that was more detailed than that.
I think if you didn't want to send it to directly back to a consultant, mm -hmm. regardless, we need to start interacting and writing because I it seems to me like as uh, Councilor Robinson just said, it seems like there's a lot of chasing around and there's a lot of conversations that are happening with various people and that might be part of why we can't get to the bottom of it. Um, the last direction staff had given was to get an easement and to do what was in the report. And it, when I sent back asking the resident if that's what they wanted to do, they avoided my question and went back to the mayor. So I think we need to start only having one conversation on this just to make sure that council is all getting the same information at the same time. So the one thing I don't like in the resolution is, and the cost to update the report will be paid by the property owner. Like to me, I think there was wrongs committed by both people. Like, you know, he was assured that that was gonna happen and it didn't happen. So I don't necessarily think that he should pay. He can put in and we can send it to the consultant. And then do we have to put something in the resolution about, you know, finding what a possible easement is in this situation? Because that's an important thing too. What if we can't get an easement? What if the easement is something that's unusable. Oh, well, and this speaks to the fact that we can continue to work toward putting an, an easement in place. So this doesn't, this allows staff some time to see how that could look or would look. But should we put the word easement in there? We need to. Yeah. I, yeah, we need to. Yeah. And like, uh, personally, I don't want the cost. I want the cost taken out because like, we have to admit that, you know, just as Councillor Robinson said, we've been chasing a tail and going down different rabbit holes and we really haven't resolved this over that period of time, you know? So this resolution has been moved and seconded. And I recommend that we defer it until we have our public work superintendent at a meeting because he's the one with the experience and who will be doing the work and we can discuss how it should be done but he's the one that will be doing it mm -hmm. and with his experience he's more knowledgeable to make a decision I think than going in circles. Yeah. Um, I'd like to as one of the mover of sector I'd like to make a friendly amendment and just end the resolution where it says for consideration and approval. So let's provide the uh, the opportunity to the property owner to make that written submission, and then that could be referred to our public works director to see if it would be suitable. But I know from public works, his opinion is that again he doesn't want to do any work on private property without an easement. But if, by doing what Councillor Buckwald said, at least then the resident can submit his proposal in writing that we can send to the consultant. And I still think we have to just find out exactly about the easement. Can the easement be a foot away from the property line or is that not a doable thing? Does it have to be three meters sorry, from the property line and that's just it? Like we know that the way things were zoned and that area is totally different than when they were zoned in Wilberforce, right? So there's stuff there now that if they were to build or whatever, it probably wouldn't happen, but it did happen. Well, the thing is with that property too, when he built, there was an existing building there and he built on the existing footprint. So he was allowed to be that close to the boundary. Uh -huh. And again, because this is going back into the 80s. Uh -huh. So yes, it's it's things that have happened that have been grandfathered in. Uh -huh. Um. And, and so perhaps maybe that that um, culvert pipe could be grandfathered in. I don't know. Just as um, as Griffith said, like wait for our superintendent to get back. But it doesn't mean that the resident can't go ahead and submit his stuff. At least it's going that much further. But I still have to, I don't know how you find out about an easement. Don't know. But somebody knows. And I think we have to figure that out too. Because that's all dependent too. What if we can't get an easement? Like then what we put in was totally wrong. Well, no, not necessarily. Not necessarily. We can, we, even, even without an easement, it's an existing works. So it, it is there. It's if, but it's, it's if we want to do anything further to it, make any changes to it. Now, moving forward from this point, we need an easement. I know, but a lawyer could say, what What changed in two years? I don't understand what changed in two we, years. We don't have to change anything. It's the, it's the property owner that's asking that we change it. 
And if he's, not, know, if he's not willing to provide an easement, I'm not prepared to send he, our staff on a private property. But if he goes to a, to seek legal counsel, the lawyer very well will say, I don't understand what's going on here. Like, you know. That's his option. Anyway, I'm just trying to reduce costs all the way. Uh, I like the idea of giving the person the opportunity to formally write what they'd like. And then, but I mean, at some point in time, we have to figure out about the easement. So we have a motion that's moved and seconded. We have to vote on that before we can do anything else. Or we can defer. I would say defer it until the road troopers. That's just too. Because he's, he's the expert in this sort of stuff. That's his job. Council Robinson, will you be here for the next meeting? Well, the next meeting is until the end of August, which isn't going to make for a happy property owner. Yeah. No. Hey, Mr. Mayor, friendly amendment. Let's just take out the phrase about the sense of cost to be paid by the property owner. So that will give the property owner an opportunity to provide the written description of what he would like to see. It will give us a chance to have the consultant look at it and approve it. And then if he if the resident agrees to it and we agree to it, then we can look at getting an easement in place. I think that pretty much addresses all the all the current issues. Finding out what he wants, getting it in writing, seeing if it's suitable, and then if we can get an, uh, an easement agreement in place, then we can look at proceeding. And I believe that's more than a friendly amendment. So my suggestion would be if Council oh, just, just, just taking out the one line. If Council wants to come up with a different resolution, then we that one there turn this one down. Down by one line. I, that's, I'm okay with that. Sure. I don't. I don't. That, that, that okay. one line is very significant. Friendly amendment. Or That's not friendly. I think, I think the words work toward putting a drainage easement in place gives us enough to be able to go to a lawyer and get some advice on the three meters, which is what also we can check out would like us to do. So I would agree that if you take out the the line that says cost to update the report, then we can just continue. To try to get the easement in place and get, but but I also agree that we need to get uh, what the resident is asking for in writing because it like the emails have different. Um, we keep referring to what Ron Ronnie told him he could have, and I think we need to just play it out. This is what you want it to look like. This is what you agree to. This is what the easement is going to say. So I would agree that that one line can come out. Because, Mr. Mayor, if we leave that line, if we leave that line in, now we have to go back to the property owner to see if he's going to be willing to pay for it, which is just going to put things down the road, and we won't be able to address anything until the end of August. At this step, if we at least go this far, we the staff we can get things rolling when the staff can deal with this, and then hopefully we have something lined up by August. But that's that's my reason for the mover and seconder are okay with the friendly amendments. That's Councilor Robinson and Councilor Buckland. I'm okay with it. Okay. Yeah. Oh. And just like, can you explain to the easement people what wherever they are? Like, I mean, before that's what it was, and that's really what he's asking. Like, you know, I don't know. Like, you know, just because, I mean, three meters would be unworkable, yeah. right? But maybe it's, they'll say, where was it before? That's where it was before. Therefore, it can go there before. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I think what we need before we make the final vote is. Considering what happened when it was built, uh -huh. there definitely was uh, uh -huh. uh, where the um, where the drain uh, pipe where the drain pipe was relative to the house. Uh -huh. So, from a legal perspective, uh -huh. where should there what is considered the easement at that point? Uh -huh. well, because because it definitely was not three feet back in nineteen eighty. So the other thing I would want confirmation of is where is the lock line? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Is it in the house or is it outside the house? Or can we move it or 
would we be encroaching on the uh -huh. in which case then, then in which case then we would need an easement with the neighbor as well exactly. and that's the thing it's yeah. like if if uh -huh. we're we're just three feet set yeah that's right okay so the resolution as amended i'll call the vote Councilor Birch. yes Councilor robinson yes Councilor Buckwell? Yes. Councilor Rector Schoenfeld? Let's read it, read it one more time. Okay, yes. And I'm a no. Okay. So that's carried. Well, item 9.1 are the non action items, and I have a motion that non action. Correspondence items 9.1.1 to 9.1.7 be accepted as information. Moved by, sorry, moved by Councillor Burns, seconded by Councillor Huffman. Councillor Burns? Oh, yes. Yeah. Oh, sorry. So when I was reading the Medical Officer of Health report, it was hard to believe that, like, we're the fifth worst. Pembroke is the fifth worst place in Ontario for overdoses. Anyway, then I was thinking of those naloxone kits. Should we have one in like the pub and should we have one in the canteen? Realizing you can't get into the canteen all the time, but what if somebody was there and there was something going on? And, and if the hub, I mean, I just think it's important to have them on site because you just don't know. That's what I'm saying. I was at a presentation um, in the mall with the um, community officers. Uh -huh. And it was highly recommended that even though we may not have any situation uh -huh. around, it's always have some one on site and it doesn't cost us anything. And to me as the summer, you know, puts into more active mode, there will be more people at our beaches. You know, I'm not sure even in Golden Lake if there can be one located there. I mean, you just don't know. Right, even yeah. the cottage cup might want to have one, and they're free, like you said. Yeah, maybe you just get it from the pharmacy. That's right. Just a thought. Yeah, so, yeah. The OPP had to deal with an overdose at the boat launch in Deacon on Friday night. There's a lady with old deed, and she she was doing a lot of weird stuff. Right. And she, she got into the river and it took two OPPs and two other guys to get her out of the river. Right. So it is well, they would carry one with them. Oh, oh yeah. 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 They have them. We have them on the fire truck yeah. as well. Okay. But it's actually something that should be in the public works vehicles, should be in the offices here in the community centers. And again, yes, at the lending hub and mm -hmm. any, any, any event that we have. Well, and I'm even thinking of the bylaw officer. She should have one in her car. Yes. Yeah. Perfect. Do staff have training on what to do with them? I, I would question the lending help for students. I'm not sure that I would be putting them in a situation to have to deal with them. But two minute video. Uh huh. Uh, I'm yeah. not, well, I would say the training is like the biggest concern I have. That if we are going to have them, we should also provide training because mm -hmm. people have it and they pull everything out and they often don't know what to do with it. Our, our... Any of any of our our staff, like the lifeguard and that, that have had first aid training, they should be familiar with how to use mm -hmm. an walk zone kit. Mm -hmm. It's it's part of all first aid courses now. Mm -hmm. I'm just not sure about students being able to deal with the, the after effect of giving the the medication because I know, like I would say, there's probably a staff should probably not be doing that alone because the reaction is sometimes violent as. Well, Brent just said, I, I the, would, the majority of the time when they come out of it, yes. So, yeah, I would say that students should definitely not be doing that. And I would question if Jill should be doing that by herself either. Um, so maybe a little bit of research before we start making paramedics out of the first time. I don't know. Maybe yeah. could I suggest that we bring a report, staff bring a report Which, back to council? I'm, I'm first aid master instructor. I can do a workshop for them and they even would be up to up to date. Okay. Because we allow people to use EpiPens, right? So I mean it's not as complicated as you think. 
you know, and I, and I know even if they weren't in an opioid crisis and you gave it to them, it's not going to hurt them. It doesn't hurt them. Mm. But, but if they are, it It'll could save definitely their save their life. Mm -hmm. I have seen it save lives myself. And, and my mom was in the hospital and she was ODing and it was amazing. You know? <laughs> and then my mom goes to my son, don't do drugs. Anyway, there was a whole she was an OD for somebody. Her medication had kept building up, building up, building up. And that's what happens. Like, so, and like, because there's a, a teacher at school whose wife's a paramedic and we had talked about that. And he's like, yeah, there's no harm in giving it. To but it could save them, right? So can we suggest to the staff to come back with the report and maybe then uh, itemize, mm -hmm. you know, the staff that should have it or which vehicles, et cetera. Yes, Pastor Roberts. Um, just when you're putting the report together, would I suggest one of the things that was commented is um, for the staff, especially the students, seeing discarded items oh. whether that are around, often there's a possibility that they could be contaminated. Mm -hmm. So I think when you're doing, when you're putting mm -hmm. that report together, it needs to look at also precaution mm -hmm. to avoid being infected. Right. Or overdose or something. Mm -hmm. like, yeah. By picking something up that, you know, mm -hmm. because you see a tissue, pick it up with your hand, it's mm -hmm. contaminated mm -hmm. and you're, you're at risk then. Should, so, be, should be part of the safety training. Exactly. It's an, it's an, it's, it's an OSHA recommendation that you know, one kid should be available in all workplaces. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. But yes, if, if at some point all you want to have a workshop with the staff or a couple of them, I'll be more than happy to come out and yeah. like it won't be certification, but it'll be familiarization that I can give them. Great. Okay. And I would certainly encourage speaking to that same topic, everybody to watch that. Uh, and I that's why I included the video link. Watch that CDC video that was done on the Mesa program in Canberra. Mm -hmm. And then, yeah. The opioid crisis, and yeah. The response teams, and yeah. Certainly, is worthwhile watching that. Okay, so all the vote on the correspondence items. Councilor Burke, yes. Councilor Robinson, yes. Councilor Buckwell, yes. Councilor Edgar Schoenfeld, yes. And I'm a yes. That's carried. And I do apologize. I missed on the department <laughs> updates. Uh, Holly had a verbal update that she wanted to It's actually because... just another apology. Um, so you had asked for the financial um, variance report and we didn't put it in two meetings ago because uh, Laura and Don were here by themselves and I didn't, I wanted to be able to answer to it and then we forgot to put it in this time. So I will email it out to, to council tomorrow and put it on our website for the public. And if anyone has any questions, I know there's a long break in between now and August, so if members of the public or council have questions, please just drop them to me. Thank you. Thanks very much. Thank and that brings us to bylaws. Go ahead, bylaw 10.1. Now, therefore, the Council of North Dakota Lower Force enact the following bylaw, bylaw 2024-36, to authorize execution of a development private road agreement between the Corporation of North Dakota Lower Force Township and Jack and Lorraine McDonald's. I have a move and a second. Moved by Councilor Buckwell, seconded by Councilor Burke. I just have one question. So when it says the requirements for the road construction, like who actually checks to make sure, you know, like um, when somebody's building a house, we have our CBO go and check out, you know, the different levels of the house building. So does our public works superintendent go out and watch them construct the road at different times to make sure that that's they're meeting all the minimum requirements? I don't know. I wouldn't say at different times. You probably will go out and Sure. Any other comments? Green then, Councilor Bird? Yes. Councilor Robinson? Yes. Councilor Buckwell? Yes. Councilor Rector Funko? Yes. Any yes? It's carried. Yep. And 10.2 is bylaw. 
2024-37. Now, therefore, the Council of North of Bona Wilberforce enact the following bylaw, bylaw 2024-37, to authorize execution of a development private road agreement between the corporation and North of Bona Wilberforce Township and YU Yi. Moved by Councillor Robinson, seconded by Councillor Buckholz. Comments or questions? Seeing none, Councillor Burns? Yes. Councillor Robinson? Yes. Councillor Buckholz? Yes. Councillor Rebecca Chonko? Yes. Oh, yes. It's very effective. And item. 10.3 is bylaw 2024-38. Now, therefore, the Council of North Preventive Wilberforce enact the following bylaw, bylaw 2024-38, to authorize execution of a development private road agreement between the Corporation of North Preventive Wilberforce Township and Kevin Dissetsky. Moved by Councillor Buckwell, seconded by Councillor Robinson. Comments? Say none. Councillor Burns? Yes. Councillor Robinson? Yes. Councillor Buckwell? Yes. Councillor Rector Schoenfeld? Yes. I mean, yes. It's very good. And in 10.4, it's bylaw 2022-52. Now, therefore, the Council of North Arizona Lower Courts enact the following bylaw. Bylaw 2022-52, being a bylaw to authorize a franchise agreement between the Corporation of North Arizona Lower Courts Township and Enbridge Gas Inc., and that this be read a third time and finally passed the second day of July, 2024. Moved by Councillor Burke, seconded by Councillor Robinson. Comments? Councillor? Uh, uh, just in the actual bylaw, in the second paragraph, where the whereas is, uh, there are no dates in for the mm. Ontario Energy Board order. There are two blank spots there that just need to be updated. Yes, once the bylaw is passed, then the date of the um, the Ontario Energy Board is to be put in that. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Any other comments? <laughs> Seeing none, Councillor Burt? Yes. Councillor Robinson? Yes. Councillor Buckle? Yes. Councillor Rector Shoko? Yes. And yes. It's very good. <laughs> Item 13.1 is the Recreation Committee, and I have a motion that Council accepts the 2024 Recreation Committee report is presented and approves all of the recommendations. We're going to be moved by Council Burt, seconded by Council Buckwell. Comments, questions? Council Recreation. If I might just speak to part of the report. So we do have a new committee member. So Sheila Smith was there. Our May meeting didn't happen because we didn't have quorum. Um, the committee had asked for the following in the summer if uh, the office would reach out to Addison, Bromley, and Bonisher Valley to see if they'd help, um, you know, partner up to cover the insurance cost of the walking program at Opiongo because it didn't go last year. Usually that happens, you know, kind of like in the fall. Um, and then also uh, that a thank you card be sent out to Bonisher Cup Inc. for the donation they made to the um, Recreation Department or Recreation Committee. And then to see... Um, so <clears throat> a couple of people said at the snow drifters, the boards are kind of in disrepair and a little bit of an eyesore. And they were just wondering if they weren't needed anymore, perhaps they could be removed. So we were just asking um, the public works person to maybe um, talk to the bonus cup Inc to see if the boards were supposed to be there or not there. And maybe at some point in time, they could be taken out to make it more, look more appealing. And the last one was for Cameron. Um, just to reach out to the Echo Center and see if they still wanted to go ahead with the horseshoe pits and stuff that um, Kevin would help and stuff. I, I don't know where that's going. That was like a, maybe a thing that you thought might happen, but if it doesn't happen, it doesn't happen. They do really want to. Yeah, so you could reach out. Um, Kevin Clark uh, would still be willing to like help with some of the infrastructure and stuff like that. Okay, so those were our recommendations, but other than that, that's what happened. There still will be costs, though. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Right. So there was a suggestion, and, and were you, were you, you were at the recreation meeting, right? Okay, so you know when you go golfing, there's whole sponsors, you know, and then they have a little plaque that says, you know, McDonald's Fuels or whatever. 
So I don't know how many pits there are, but there is a chance that, you know, you could go around to four businesses, like I'm sure Country Depot and maybe, you know, Foodland, they donate. And then that though, those monies could go towards refurbishing. Just that was just a thought, right? Mm -hmm. um, Kevin did have some wood that he was going to donate. So that would help too. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, the other, the other question was, um, because I know it was the administration or organization that was a question mark. Is the Echo Center, do they have anybody available that will take on that role? Yeah, they've committed to do it. Okay. That. Perfect. Did you get the letter for Rotary? Not yet. Because yeah. Rotary would, right. be, um, would be one of the considerations. Mm -hmm. So it was on vacation until July 23rd. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 So that would be good. Okay. So that was it for the recreation committee meeting of June. And Thank you. That's what happens. And uh, the road we appreciated getting the letter. Hallelujah. <laughs> 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 I just thought I would say that. <laughs> you know, things get lost in the mail. This okay. one did. That was super, okay. super okay. good. Call the vote, Councilor Burke. Yes. Councilor Robin. Yes. Councilor Burke. Yes. Councilor Burke. Yes. Yes, that is carried. Thank you. So, upcoming meetings and unfinished business. Our next regular council meeting will be August the and that's twenty seventh now, correct? Not the twentieth. Yes, August twenty seventh, twenty twenty four at seven p.m. Uh, then following regular council meeting will be September the third, twenty twenty four at seven p.m. And the recreation committee will meeting will be September 7th, 2024 at 7 p.m. And we don't have a closed session. September 9th. Oh, September the 9th. I'm sorry. Where did I get that? September 9th. There's sorry. a lot of sevens. <laughs> we don't have a closed session tonight, so uh, we'll move to our confirmatory bylaw. That bylaw 2024-39 being a bylaw to confirm the proceedings of council for July the 2nd, 2024. We've read a first and second time the second day of July 2024. Do I have a mover and a seconder? Moved by Council Bucknell, seconded by Council Burke. <clears throat> Is read a third time, finally passed this second day of July 2024. Councilor Burke? Yes. Councilor Robinson? Yes. Councilor Buckwell? Yes. Councilor Rector Sonfo? Yes. I mean, yes. That's very, thank you. And I'm not sure what happened, but I don't have a uh, resolution for adjournment. Mm -hmm. Mr. Mayor, I'll move to <laughs> And I second that. I think uh, Laura's going to bring it on up. Here we go. By motion that this July 2nd, 2024, regular council meeting adjourns at 8.18 p.m. Moved by Councilor Rector Schoenfeld, seconded by Councilor Buckwald. Councilor Burks? Yes. Councilor Robinson? Yes. Councilor Buckwald? Yes. Councilor Rector Schoenfeld? Yes. And yes, that is very, thank you very much for your learning. See you, Karen. Have a good summer. Yes. Yes.